Hello everyone, today we will talk about bipolar disorder. This is the overall index and introduce our group members. So, let's dive in into this topic. Do you know what is bipolar disorder? Basically, bipolar disorder is a long-term condition, formerly called manic depressive illness, that causes unusual shifts in a person's mood, energy, activity levels, and concentration. Patients with bipolar disorder may have experienced manic during the daytime while depression at nighttime. Bipolar disorder often develops for the first time during teenage years or early adulthood. It tends to affect more females than males. There are three types of bipolar disorder which are bipolar 1 disorder, bipolar 2 disorder and cyclothymic disorder, also called cyclothymia. Bipolar eye disorder is defined by manic episodes that last for at least 7 days or by manic symptoms that are so severe that the person needs immediate medical care. Patients experiencing 4 or more episodes of mania within 1 year are considered to have rapid cycling. Bipolar 2 disorder is defined by a pattern of depressive episodes and hypomanic episodes. The hypomanic episodes are less severe than the manic episodes in bipolar 1 disorder. Lastly, cyclothymic disorder is defined by recurring hypomanic and depressive symptoms that are not intense enough or do not last long enough to qualify as hypomanic or depressive episodes. Sometimes a person might experience symptoms of bipolar disorder that do not match the three categories listed above, and this is referred to as other specified and unspecified bipolar and related disorder. Let me show you some of the signs and symptoms Symptoms of bipolar disorder. Manic characteristic give a happy feeling and talkative while depression characteristic will feeling sad, lacks energy and lost concentration. Let's go, we can go take a dessert. So, uh, no, no, no. Uh, we go to play badminton. Badminton? Fun, ma? Or we can take a selfie here. A manic person will have many ideas, but a depressed person will feel lost interest. Besides, depressed person will face difficulty, but the manic person have a decreased need of sleep. Furthermore, a depressed person sometimes loss of appetite and have suicidal thoughts. Here are the summary signs and symptoms for manic and depression characteristic of bipolar disorder. Now, we will explore the key factors that increase the risk of developing bipolar disorder. Let's dive in. First, let's discuss genetics. Bipolar disorder has a strong hereditary component. Children of a parent with bipolar disorder have an 8% risk compared to 1% in the general population. Identical twins are more likely to both develop bipolar disorder than fraternal twins. Next, stressful and traumatic life events can significantly contribute to bipolar disorder. Major stressors like family conflicts and employment difficulties can trigger bipolar disorder. Childhood traumas such as sexual abuse, physical abuse, or the loss of loved ones can increase the risk of bipolar disorder as well. Substance abuse is another significant factor. The misuse of alcohol, tobacco, and drugs can trigger manic episodes or worsen mood symptoms in those predisposed to bipolar disorder. Therefore, it is crucial for individuals at risk to avoid substance misuse to manage their overall mental health. Moreover, co-occurring mental disorders play a role. Individuals with conditions like anxiety disorders, insomnia, or attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, ADHD, are at a higher risk of developing bipolar disorder. These co-occurring conditions can further complicate the management of bipolar disorder. Finally, let's discuss biochemical factors, specifically neurotransmitter imbalances in the brain. Dysregulation of key neurotransmitters such as noradrenaline, serotonin, as well as dopamine, are linked to bipolar disorder. Although the exact mechanisms are complex and not fully understood, these abnormalities contribute to higher risk of developing bipolar disorder. There are a few complications of bipolar disorder. The first one is substance use disorder. Many people with bipolar disorder also struggle with alcohol or drug use like cannabis to try and cope with many and depressive symptoms. This can lead to addiction because of shared genetic factors and how these substances affect the brain rewards and impossibility area. However, using drugs or alcohol only temporarily ease bipolar symptoms and makes treating the disorder harder. It can mask mood swings and make the illness more resistant to treatment. To prevent addiction and help manage both bipolar disorder and substance use, adjusting treatments and using therapy or medication can be important steps. Next is anxiety disorder. About 4 in 10 people with bipolar disorder also experience symptoms of anxiety disorder which can be challenging to differentiate from bipolar symptoms. Signs of co occurring anxiety include panic attacks, resistant anxiety or nervousness between depressive or many episodes, sleep disturbance and struggles with medication side effects and dosage. Anxiety symptoms may not improve with standard bipolar treatments, and untreated anxiety can increase the risk of substance use disorder. While preventing anxiety in bipolar disorder is complex, medication or cognitive behavioral therapy can effectively manage these symptoms and improve overall well-being. Moreover is obesity and metabolic syndrome. People with bipolar disorder are about twice as likely as the general population to develop metabolic syndrome. This increased risk is partly due to higher levels of sedentary behavior and certain medications, particularly antipsychotics, which can contribute to weight gain. 
Obesity can lead to poorer responses to medication and poses a significant health risk, including heart disease and diabetes. To prevent weight gain and metabolic issues, individuals need to adopt healthy behaviors like regular exercise and a balanced diet. If medication-related weight gain becomes problematic, doctors may consider alternative treatments. Last but not least is stress and upheaval in many areas of life. Bipolar disorder can create significant stress and disruptions in various areas of life including relationships, work and finances. People experiencing many and depressive episodes often face higher divorce rates and challenges in maintaining employment due to erratic behavior. Many struggle with unemployment and feel unfairly treated at work because of their condition. These issues highlight the wide-reaching impact of bipolar disorder and underscore the importance of supportive networks and understanding in managing its effect on daily life. Hello, my name is Dr. Farid, psychologist of the University of Malaya. So now, we are focusing on the critical aspect of diagnosis bipolar disorder. So, a correct diagnosis of bipolar disorder is a crucial step of the providing effective treatments. Thus, this process involves the by mental health professionals, often including a combination of the clinical interviews, some questionnaires, and also the most important is physical examination. Firstly, Bipolar 1 disorder is characterized by many episodes that are at least 7 days or by many episodes symptoms that are required for acute still care. Less uh, depression episodes also occur but lasting at least 2 weeks. So the intensity and the duration of any episodes uh, distinguish Bipolar 1 disorder from other types. So one example of many episodes in Bipolar uh, such as elevated sports, increased energy and the last one is the irritability. Furthermore, bipolar 2 disorder involves a pattern of repetitive episodes and hypomanic episodes, but not the fully blown main episodes are seen in bipolar type 1. But hypomania is less severe and form of mania and does not require hospitalization. Thus, recognizing the subtler shift in moods is essential for accurate diagnosis. So, what is hypomanic episodes includes, uh, such as uh, resting tones, uh, reduced need for sleep, and lastly, my impressivity. The last one, psychotype disorder or psychotonia, is characterized by periods of the hypomanic symptoms and the periods of the depressive symptoms that lasting at least two years in the adult and uh, one year in the children. However, the symptoms that not meet the intensity criteria for hypomanic episode or uh, major depressive episodes, psychotonia can be challenging to diagnose due to less intense but more chronic nature. So what is the perceived uh, episode include, uh, such as uh, persistent sickness, loss of interest, the most uh, common is affected. But to diagnose this type incorrectly, and the health professionals with the very tools and technique, including charts, like structured interviews, and a standardized uh, questionnaires, although the book charts have track and books equation of the times, providing valuable insight into the patterns that might include the bipolar disorder. Standardized questionnaires and uh, standardized structured interviews that aid in gathering cohesive information about the mental individual and the health uh, history. So that's all for me. Thank you. Have you ever wondered, what are the pharmacological treatments for bipolar disorders? According to clinical practice guidelines, for management of bipolar disorders in adults, there are two phases that can be considered. When choosing a pharmacological treatment, in the acute phase, the monotherapy for first-line treatment involves using either lithium or quetiapine. For combination therapy, options include using lithium or valproate, together with a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor, olanzapine with an selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor, lithium with valproate, or lithium or valproate with bupropion. The monotherapy for second-line treatment includes using either valproate or loracidone for combination therapy. The options are quetiapine with an selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor, lithium or valproate with lamotrigine, or lithium or valproate with loracidone. The monotherapy for third-line treatment includes using either carbamazepine or olanzapine for combination therapy. Options include using lithium with carbamazepine or lithium with pramipexol. In the maintenance phase, the first-line treatment for monotherapy includes lithium, lamotrigine, valproate, olanzapine, or quetiapine for combination therapy. It involves using lithium or valproate with quetiapine 
aripoprazole or ziprasidone as adjunctive therapy for the second line treatment monotherapy options are carbamazepine or paliperidone for combination therapy the options include lithium with valproate lithium with carbamazepine lithium with risperidone or lithium with lamotrigine the third line treatment for monotherapy is acenapine for combination therapy it involves using lithium or valproate with acenapine as adjunctive therapy it is important to note that gabapentin topiramate or antidepressants should not be used as monotherapy and flupenthixyl should not be used as a adjunctive therapy. Besides pharmacological treatments, there are also few non-pharmacological treatments that can be done in the treatment of bipolar disorders. The first treatment is an electroconvulsive treatment. Electroconvulsive therapy induces a seizure in a patient who has been given a short-acting anesthetic and is unconscious. Though controversial, electroconvulsive treatment is a well-established psychiatric treatment with strong evidence supporting its effectiveness and safety. It is primarily used to treat severe depression that hasn't responded to other treatments. Electroconvulsive treatment is also used as a first-line treatment for depression when a rapid response is needed, as it works faster than medications. Next is psychosocial interventions, which subdivides into few treatments options such as cognitive behavioral therapy, interpersonal social rhythm therapy, group psychoeducation, family-oriented interventions, early warning signal. Cognitive behavioral therapy is founded on the idea that thoughts, feelings, and behaviors are interconnected. The goal is to teach patients to identify, confront, and replace problematic beliefs related with negative mood states with more beneficial ones. Interpersonal social rhythm therapy trains patients to control sleep-wake patterns, work, exercise, and food times, while also addressing interpersonal concerns. Group psychoeducation improves comprehension of illness and management, leading to higher treatment satisfaction and adherence rates. The program aims to enhance illness awareness, treatment adherence, early identification of symptoms, and consistent lifestyle habits. Family-oriented interventions includes communication, problem-solving, and psychoeducation to handle stress in the household, which can lead to high levels of emotional expression. Early warning signal therapies teach patients to recognize and manage Manage. Early warning indicators of recurrence. The primary goal is to intervene early and self-manage manic and depressed symptoms, not to forget to aim for a healthy lifestyle. Bipolar disorder patients are advised to eat healthy foods. Omega-3 fatty acids are essential for proper brain function. Research shows a link between low levels of vitamin D and B and depression. A well-balanced diet can help people with bipolar disorder feel more in control of their lives. Aim to eat a variety of foods, including whole grains, fresh vegetables, lean meats, and heart-healthy fish like salmon and tuna. Furthermore, they should also get enough sleep. Sleep can be challenging with bipolar disorder. During manic phases, you might sleep very little. And during depressive phases, you might struggle to get out of bed. Lack of sleep can trigger mood changes. Ensuring you get enough sleep improves both mental and physical health. Lastly is the challenges and prevention. So, for the challenges it is very crucial for diagnostic including distinguishing bipolar disorder from unipolar major depressive disorder and it also crucial in therapeutic including prioritizing efficacy which therapeutic effects versus tolerability which adverse effects and managing the adverse effects. Firstly, the challenges are in diagnostic criteria for depressive episodes that are identical in bipolar disorder and unipolar depression. Bipolar disorder is thus often misdiagnosed as unipolar depression. Next challenges are many different bipolar disorder subtypes exist. Bipolar disorder type 2 is especially difficult to distinguish from unipolar depression because of frequent depressive episodes and the absence of full-blown mania. The third challenge is our depressive symptoms are common in bipolar disorder and their prevalence is higher than that of hypomanic or manic simply. The challenges in mixed mood episodes are more common than was previously thought in bipolar disorder. These episodes might obscure detection of mania and hypomania in view of the reporting bias towards depressive symptoms in people with bipolar disorder seeking treatment. Next, is the prevention of bipolar disorders. Treatment of bipolar disorder is complex and commonly administered according to current bipolar illness phase for example acute bipolar depression, acute mania, or bipolar maintenance and clinical urgency as well as prior efficacy or tolerability. However, lithium is the gold standard for bipolar maintenance treatment in both the US and Europe. The first prevention is pay attention to warning signs and symptoms. Addressing symptoms early on can prevent episodes from getting worse. You may have identified a pattern to your bipolar episodes and what triggers them. For example, suicidal thought, decrease ability to concentrate trait, loss energy, insomnia, feeling worthlessness, unintended weight loss or weight gain and loss of interest in activities. While mania and hypomania are two different episodes but share same symptoms as increased energy, decreased need sleep, speaking rapid and abnormally jumped or wired. The second prevention is avoiding drugs and alcohol. Using alcohol or recreational drugs can worsen the symptoms and make them more likely to come back especially affect the physical and mental health consequence. The last prevention is to take medications as prescribed by doctor or pharmacists. You may be tempted to stop treatment but don't. Stopping your medication or reducing your dose on your own may cause withdrawal effects or your symptoms may worsen or return. Let's take a look in the video about the risk if not taken medication as prescribed.
Thank you for watching. Remember to like, share, subscribe. Bye.